Hello there, this is Dimitris Christou and this is my first video tutorial on Blender 2.7.0 and this time around we'll be using the all new wireframe modifier and I'm sure you've seen some wire modified tutorials around but for this one we won't have to rely on existing geometry to showcase what the wireframe modifier can do for us we'll just use the default cube so let's move on, we have the default cube here selected I'll click this little icon to move over to the object modifiers and I'm going to click add modifier and add wireframe modifier so you can see what the cube here looks with the wire modifier set I'm going to change the thickness from 0 0.02 to 0 0.1 to have a thicker wireframe for my cube here I'll also add modifier, click add modifier and add let's add an array and you can see how the array here works it creates a clone of the object and uses the relative offset to move it one unit to the side but we won't be using the relative offset for this one and I'm going to check the object offset so we now need an object to affect the offset for the array modifier so I'm going to hit shift A and add empty and plain axis I'll move over to the axis options, click this little icon and change the size from 1 to 2 and I'm changing the size so I can easily see and select my empty here OK now back to the cube, I'm right mouse button clicking, to select it and back to the modifiers for my array here we have set to object offset so I'm going to click this little field and select the empty to be the object to affect the offset of the array modifier what I'll also do is add a final modifier and this modifier will be again a wireframe modifier and by adding a second wireframe modifier you can see that we're getting this nice geometry here these nice edges and I find them to be pretty interesting now for the bottom wireframe modifier I'm going to change the thickness to zero from 0 0.02 to 0 0.035 OK now I'm selecting the empty, right mouse button click to select the empty and I'm hitting S on my keyboard and typing in 0 0.85 to change the scale of the empty on every axis to 0 0.85 you can see right here and you can see now how the empty affects the array and the array follows the scaling of the empty and creates a copy smaller than the one before so selecting the cube and moving back to the modifiers and what I'll do now is increase the count for the array from 2 let's bring it up to say 15 or perhaps 16 ok looking good I'll now hit 0 on my numeric keypad while the cursor is over the 3D view to switch to the camera perspective view and I'm going to right click this frame to select the camera and let's input some values to get a nice angle for, for our object here, for our scene I'm setting the X to 3 the Y to 2 let's set the Z to a negative 1.2 I'll set the X rotation, let's set it to 110 the Y, I'll set it to 5 and I'll set the Z here, let's set it to 125 OK let's increase the Z rotation here I think we're good at about there and the X, let's set it to 111 now that I have the camera here selected, I'll move over to the camera options and I'll change the focal length, let's set it from 35 to 33 so we're fitting a bit more of our scene into the camera frame and while we're here I'm going also to check limits so I can see this little uh, yellow cross here and this yellow cross here is where the focal point of the camera is I'm going to change the distance let's move our uh, little yellow cross here let's bring it closer at about here and what I want for my uh, little cross here is not to be at the center of the cube but to the uh, outside I think we're good at about 2.6 alright looking good 
I'm hitting zero again on my Mary Keeper to switch to camera perspective view. And I'll also change the blender render to the cyclist render. And right mouse button click to select my cubes here. And move over to the modifiers to the, excuse me, to the material options. And we have a material already set up. I'll click use nodes for uh, setting my material. I'm going to change the surface from diffuse BSDF to glass BSDF. And I'll change the color. Let's make it a nice bright green color. And while I'm at it, let's change the settings so we can see the viewport color here. Okay. Now I'll move uh, over to world options. You can click this little blue sphere to move to the world options. I click use nodes. And I'll change the color for the world to a brighter one so we have some illumination from the environment. And I'm going to select the camera again, move over to the camera options. And I think we're good. What I'll do for my focal point here to work is change the aperture here. The size, I'll set it from 0 to 0 0.02. I think we're good at about there. Okay. Now time to modify our, our empty here a bit and add some animation to our scene. I'm selecting the empty and hitting 0 on my memory keypad for the camera perspective view. And I'm going to move to the transform options. We have the location, rotation and scale here. And I'll change the rotation. Let's set the X to minus 25 degrees. Let's set the Y to minus 10 degrees. And the Z, let's set it to 2.5 degrees. Okay. Moving over to the render options, and we have the animation. The start frame is set to 1, and the end frame is set to 300. Okay. So, we're at frame 1, and we have the empty here selected. I have the cursor over the 3D view, so I'm going to hit the I key to insert a rotation keyframe for the empty for frame 1. And you can see that we have the rotation values here turning all yellow, and that means that we have a keyframe for the specific frame for the selected object. Now moving back to frame 300, and I'm going to click this little icon to jump to the final frame of the animation. And I'm going to change the rotation value for the empty here. I'll change the X, let's set it to minus 10. Let's leave the Y as it is, and set the Z to 0. OK. And I'm going this time around, I won't insert the keyframe while the cursor is over the 3D view. I have the keyframe, the cursor here of the rotation. And I'll just hit the I key to insert the rotation for this specific frame for rotation for my, for my empty here. OK. Let's move back to take a look at the animation. And I want a smooth motion for the empty and therefore for the scene here. Okay, looking good. I'll move over to the render options and I'm going to change the sampling a bit and we want to use some more samples for the render. Let's set it up from 10 to 50. And I'm also going to change the device. I'll change it from CPU to GPU compute. And by doing this, I'm letting my graphics card here help with me with uh, my cyclist render. So I'm going to hit render to render an image to take a look. So rendering in cycles, it takes some time and we're also using glass material that increases render time. And of course, if you want to render your own image and animation, I would clearly suggest to use a higher uh, render samples value here. But this one looks pretty nice as it is. Okay. So I'm hitting the escape key to move back to my 3D view. Let's save this one. Click file, save. And let's save this as under the... Okay. Now I want to show you something more here for my scene. I'm going to select the cube. Move over to the modifiers panel. And as you might imagine, you can uh, affect your uh, wireframe modifiers here in many ways. You can change the thickness. You can also animate the thickness and the offset and pretty much every value here in Blender. I'll bring this one back to 0 
And what I'll do is uh, delete the bottom wireframe modifier. And I'll click Add Modifier. And I'll add a cast modifier. Okay. I'll move my cast modifier up. I want it to be right below the wireframe modifier. And I'll click Add Modifier and add a subdivision surface modifier. And the subdivision, the subsurface modifier, I want this one to be up as well. So I'm clicking this little lag this little uh, arrow here to move it up in the modifiers stack and I'm going to bring the subsurf modifier right between the cast and the wireframe modifier. Now in order for the subsurf modifier to work and not create this uh, little result here for my wireframe you have to click here to crease edges. Okay. Now what I'll do is increase the view and the render for the subsurf modifier to 3 and you can see now that the cast modifier right below creates a nice interesting result for my object and it pushes the uh, outer of my wireframe modifier here out and I think this looks pretty interesting and let's also see what we can do I'll bring the factor for the cast modifier from a positive 0 0.5 to a negative 0 0.7 okay and as you can see here we're having again a pretty interesting result so this is it this is of course an animation and I'll be rendering something for you people to see and I'll be rendering this one so this is it I think this was pretty easy and we're having a nice a nice way to use the wire modifier and this is Dimitris Christou and thanks for watching.